Hey everybody, this is just a quick video that I'm making for a friend at work who asked, but I figured all of you might find it useful as well. Let's say you want to animate something, but you kind of don't want to bother with animating, and it would be great if it was something that you could let physics solve for you. So, let's do that. Let's take this chair. Say you had a scene where a character threw a chair or dropped a chair, and you don't really want to hand animate that, or you want to have at least a jump start. So, let's lift this chair in the air and we're gonna to go to its properties here we're gonna check simulate physics so that when you hit play you get some physics going there right so hit stop it hit play now normally I'm working in an area where we're de dealing with cinematic so we're not usually ever hitting this play button because we're not playing games but it's gonna be really handy in this case so I hit play again just to watch it say so, oh yeah that looks great I wish I could hand animate that but I don't really want to take that much time. So what you can do is you can record this action that happens during play and then use that in your sequence for your animation of your chair. So let me show you how to do that. First, you need a window called the take recorder. So under window cinematics, you'll see there is the take recorder. It isn't there by default. It's a plugin you have to add. So just go to edit plugins, look for take, enable take recorder. You'll need to restart your engine, but that's fine. It just takes a second. So once you add that, again, go to Windows, Cinematics, Take Recorder. And I think it comes out floating, but I like to just drop it here or wherever. You know, it's up to you and do the interface however you want. So I already have it hiding here, but I'm going to pretend it's not there. So let's, uh, where was I? So if I hit play again, this is what I want to record the action of. So what the Take Recorder will do you tell it here what you want to record. So I'm going to, with the chair selected, go to source, from actor, add chair. So now the chair is listed here as something that's going to be recorded. And also in this exact case, uh, so normally you'll get this countdown by default, like a three second countdown, kind of like in Premiere recording audio or other tools. But for this, I kind of want it to record as soon as I hit the play button. Uh, so I'm going to hit this gear icon here and whoops, hit that gear icon. I had already hit it before. Come down here and I'm going to set my countdown. It default is three. You want to set it to zero if you don't want to wait three seconds for it to start recording. You'll see why in a second, why I don't want that three seconds. So now it's kind of a two-step process and you got to be kind of quick on the keys. So again, when I hit play, that chair is going to drop, but I want to record the keyframes of that chair dropping as uh, you know XYZ positions. When I opened up Take Recorder, you'll see it went to the sequencer here, and it kind of records into a, um, well, it calls it a pending take. You'll see where it goes after we do it. I'll show you where it went. So if I hit play, there it goes. All right, nothing happened here because the Take Recorder isn't doing anything yet. So that's the first thing you have to do is hit play. I'm gonna give it just a little bit more height as well. So because I have to coordinate my key presses here. So if I hover here, it says the hot key for hitting the play button is Alt P. So you can either hit Alt P and then have your mouse ready here to click this button as soon as you do that, or just click quickly. So I'm gonna go play, record, and I missed my table. But that's fine. Uh, let me bump it over just a little bit this way and this way. And let's try that again. I'll just do a couple takes. And this is good, you know, you may wanna do a couple takes as well. So second take here, I'm going to hit play, record, there we go, nice table hit, and then stop my uh, simulation. So that recorded the motion of the chair, and if I want to see that last one, uh, you can hit here to review it. So I'm going to hit that little button, and it shows, I'll show you where these are going, but that is the actual, uh, what just got recorded. And it's it's kind of showing me this and my current level, because it's, uh, kind of putting it into the scene. So you're like, why is my chair here? And it's here. It's kind of loading both the recorded chair and your original chair at the moment. Uh, let me go to the content browser. And so what it's doing, each time you make a recording, it puts it into the cinematics takes folder. It's going to give it a date and naming and such. So here it is in a little sequence. And then if you go into the uh, folder here, so here I have, this is my second one. This is the chair itself. If I double click that sequence, you're going to have to watch the video on the uh, sequencer if, if none of this is making sense to you. So don't watch this as the first video of mine you've ever watched. Uh, I have a video on 
how to deal with sequences, subsequences, and all that. So watch that, then come back here to understand this better. Double click. So here is the chair that got recorded into its own level sequence with all the keyframes. So if I scrub through, you can see that's the motion of the chair. So what you want to do is, odds are you were just using this tool to get the animation for the chair. So I'm going to grab the transform here of the animated chair, right click on it, and copy it. I'm just using it for its animation. Now back in the content browser, uh, maybe I have uh, shot one that is a sequence that I'm putting together of actors and everything else going on. I want this chair to be working in, right? So I'm going to go into uh, this lo empty level sequence at the moment. And I have my chair uh, just sitting up there for the moment, which is fine. You'll see I'm going to override its position anyway with the animation. So I'm going to add my chair to my sequencer here. All right. So then, because I've already copied the keyframes, if I hit play, of course, uh, well, actually, I need to turn off physics now. I don't need physics anymore on the chair. I can hit play and nothing's going to happen because there's just a static chair sitting in the air. But I want to paste the transforms that I just copied from my uh, take record. So I'm going to right click on transform for the chair here. And oh, right before I do that, I'm going to go back to first frame. Right click, paste. That pastes the keyframes for the chair. Now it also left this other transform you actually don't need. So just toss that. And now the chair is going to grab the uh, positions that you recorded in the take recorder. So I hit play. And then now the chair in this shot one is being animated with all these keyframes that you recorded using the take recorder. So it's actually pretty handy. I'll show one other thing um, for the, the thing I was doing with somebody at work. They were doing the recording of this in a different scene and then bringing it into another scene. So that meant the uh, X, Y positions were not necessarily where they needed to be. So what you could do if that was your situation, you just want to provide some offsets. You could do that by messing with the um, with the curve editor for just shuffle all your curves around. Or if it's a big amount of change, you could parent this chair to a empty actor. Let me show that really quick. So if I have an empty actor, I think I'll throw that in the scene somewhere. Um, and so that's just cheap filler. In Maya, you would do something like a, an empty group but we don't have that in this case. So here's my empty actor. I'm gonna throw it with my static meshes here just for organization. Here's my chair. And I wanna be, I wanna parent this chair to the empty actor. So I just drag and drop it on there. So now if I select the empty actor, you know, you could even call it uh, F2, call it something like chair offset, you know, whatever you wanna call it. So it's really just a way that you can grab the um, the chair uh, with a parent control there and move it. So now when I hit my playback, the chair is gonna be somewhere else. So anyway, that's just providing a little offset if needed. If not, then you don't need to do that. All right, so that's really, it's not much of a tutorial. It's more of a just showing this concept that you can use a take recorder, kick on some physics, record that, and then turn off the physics and then put it back so you don't have to hand animate a chair falling and rolling. So maybe you might have something rolling across the scene or you know just something that you could take advantage of physics with and be able to record that and then put it into your sequence so you don't have to hand animate it. All right, that's it. If you have questions, throw them in the comments and I'll try to get to those. Or there's this, there's, this may open up more questions for you than uh, solving any answers, but that's how we learn, right? You just try this, see if it works for you. And then uh, let's see what else we can learn. Cheers.